from America's finest city. This is Real Talk San Diego on ESPN 1700. All right, what's happening, gang? San Diego, you are live in the stash, baby. I'm your host, Jesse Avanias, co-founder of the Greenhouse Group, helping move folks into and out of homes right here in the heart of San Diego and moving people with purpose. In the studio live today, we're going to be talking a lot about that thread, Purpose, with probably one of the most purposeful men that I know. And uh, that's what we got for you here at The Stash every Tuesday on ESPN Radio 1700 between 10 and noon. Grabbing some of the coolest local people, talking about some of the coolest local stuff, getting some good stories out of those cats with the uh, unified purpose of leaving us better than how they found us in the studio live today. Promise you that I will not uh, disappoint because I'm flanked by uh, probably one of our greatest local cats, legends, sports hero, perhaps, <laughs> thought leader, you betcha. Third time in the stash. Third time in the stash. So long time listener, third time caller. Yes. Uh, my man, Joe Stump. Joe Stump, thank you so much for hanging out with us, brother. Yeah. Now, if that name has not preceded you, then uh, no sweat. We got your back because we got some time to expound on this conversation of awesomeness. Uh, now, specifically, uh, the domain. And allow me, Joe, if I'm going to set this context up, uh, you know, some of these messages we find, some of the messages find us. This morning, when I was getting ready, I came across this one. It's an oldie and a goodie. Perhaps allow us to, uh, in a transcendental-like state, uh, allow this to wash over you. The quote is, surround yourself with the dreamers and the doers, the believers and the thinkers, but most of all, Surround yourself with those who see greatness within you, even when you don't see it yourself. Mm. And my man, I feel like that's probably one of your greatest gifts that I've experienced personally in my life. And I've watched how you have existed as the inflection point for thousands and thousands of self-employed local business owners and specifically in the domain of real estate. That's kind of been that's been your bag. You know, you've expanded that into all kinds of different arenas, but I know that's always kind of been your heart and soul. And akin inside of that space, the concept of how to generate business by doing a great job for somebody and then making sure that you deliver beyond expectations and ask in a very thoughtful and heartfelt way to be able to have a business that works by referral. And that's actually the name, of course, of your company that you've held down for what now, Joe? About three decades? Yeah, I'll come up on 30 years. Coming up on 30 years. Right. By referral only. By the way, if you want to go check him out, he's at byreferralonly.com. It's only because it's a pattern interrupt, mm. which I think is probably a good place to start with you, my man. Yeah. Um, well, let me tell you how that name came about. I love it. It's a beautiful story. I was in a seminar in Los Angeles with uh, the CEO of my company at that time, David Corbin of David's Living. Hello, David. And... Uh, we were watching a dentist explain how he built this dental practice to be one of the largest dental practices in all, Australia. Now, what, what what year was this? This is new. We're going back 30, 30 29, 30 years okay, ago. Okay, so right about uh, the inception point. Right, okay. right. And, uh, and he's describing uh, you know, that he had, at one time in his life, he wanted to commit suicide. And that's where he began with. And, and little known fact that... Dentist had the highest suicide rate of any profession. And, and in the movie business, we call that the hook. That, yep, yep. Okay, so the journey begins. <laughs> so, so you were listening. Yeah, so he got me. And he says, you know, I came to this point where I was either going to completely reinvent my business, completely get out of the dental business, or I was going to X myself off. And he says, you know, what I discovered was is that I hated coming to work, but people liked what I did, but they hated what I did to them. Mm. And so he started to make a list of all the things in his practice that people hated. You know, the sound of the drill, the smell of the office, mm. uh, the cost of the service. Uh, you know, when you walk into a dental office, you, have, you know, you're sitting there and you're, ah, bzzz, you know, all the, and, and all, the, all the horrors that you would have. And then what he started to do was address each one of them individually. So he put a television in the ceiling put a little button on the chair so when people are getting down to work done, they look up, they're watching a movie, and if they're feeling uncomfortable, they press a little button and a little red light goes on and asks them you know, to stop the, you know, you know, whatever they're doing. Uh, you, you know, put fresh cookies uh, as the scent in the office so as soon as they came in in the morning, they started baking fresh cookies.
cookie, so it wasn't the smell of bent, burnt teeth. If you walked in and uh, the dentist was more than a minute late, they took five dollars off of your bill for mm-hmm. every every minute they were late. And, and so they just kept addressing all of the things that people hated about the dental mm-hmm. world. And uh, and so, long story short, is it, he closed his business down to do the complete reinvention of his business. And then when he reopened it up, he. Uh, asked uh, each one of his clients, he says, would you like to have the service? You know, and he described to them what the new service was like. And, and they said, oh, yeah, we'd love to have that. And he goes, well, I'm going to charge the same amount of money. But the only condition is this, is, is that if you want to be my client, you have to introduce or refer at least two people to me mm-hmm. who are like you if you want me to be your client. And every one of them said, is that all you want, just two? And uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then he put his, his thing, and I'm sitting in the seminar of the state, Jesse, and I'm listening to this. I'm going, that is exactly what's happened to a real estate agent. Yeah. Real estate agents, uh, you know, there's a, a hierarchy of horror that people hate the experience of working uh, with a real estate agent or selling their house. And if we could address each one of those systematically, we could say to the client, hey, if you would like to add that service, all we ask you to do is, is to introduce us to at least two people that you care about. And it was that day I wrote down on the piece of paper by referral only. Mm. And David Corbin, my CEO, looked over and goes, oh, that's good. Mm. And then we went out you know, and started looking at you know, the process of putting a, a trademark together. But I, I love that thought that if you address what people absolutely hate about the experience of buying a car, finding a divorce attorney, finding a financial planner, looking for a mortgage broker, they can really look at it from the eyes of the customer and then systematically address each one of them so they absolutely love the experience Mm. and offer your services for the same amount of money everyone else does, but make the condition that they refer and recommend people to you. And that's where buy referral only comes from. Yeah, and that context, I think... um and by the way, beautifully told story. I'd never heard that before, so mm. I, I appreciate that. Um, is interesting, though, because <clears throat> you would hope that it would be organic, would you not? You would hope that the entire thing, when put up on its head, would be just as mathematically equivalent if it was standing upright to say that if you did a great job, someone would feel inclined to introduce you to someone that they cared about who because they wanted to feel good about that person who they were introducing to have the same experience they had. Right. But but is that it? Is that all that really required or is there more? Well, it, it's in your nature, you, Jesse Abanez, to have an experience and then share it with other people. And maybe 20% of the people have that in their nature. They're what we would call as a maven. What they Mm. do is part of their psychological profile is they have an experience. They go to a movie. They go to a restaurant. They watch a TV show. And they they have the experience that they really enjoy. And it's just natural for them to say, hey, you need to go see, you know, American Sniper. You need to go eat over at such and such restaurant. You know, it's just who they are. But a, a larger percentage of the population, so let's say 80, 85 percent of the population, uh, they are not of that makeup. But when they are encouraged, when they are um, uh, incentivized in some cases. Because val- value uh, is, is received only when value is recognized. So sometimes you just have to put a frame around it is kind of what you're saying. Right. So I got a friend that's opening up a restaurant in uh, Encinitas. And I'm really excited for him. Uh, and I'm also terrified for him. He has no restaurant experience at all. But he's got this amazing product, okay. uh, uh, Rosati's Pizza. It's going to be uh, up on NCS. And my brother is really good friends with the owner. And he was saying to me, what could, what could you do if you were going to just give him one piece of coaching advice to help him grow his business? Mm. And I said, well, you know, when a person goes in and has a great experience, how they feel about the experience in that moment, they want to share it right away. So if they could just get to the place where a person's pizza is delivered to the table, they love the pizza, how can they encourage people to take a picture of it, get into social media, mm-hmm. start talking about it inside the experience, not after the experience, but inside the experience? And so, we, you know, we've been brainstorming a couple ideas on how a waiter could walk over and say, hey, you guys, our intention is for you to love this pizza so much. All you want to do is take out your cell phones, take pictures and start tweeting away. And uh, let me know if we, are, if we get to that point. And if you do post it on Facebook, just show me and I'll give you, I will give you free drinks. Hmm. And I think that for a restaurant, you know, that 
is going to spend money on advertising and marketing, why not have everybody who enjoys the experience share it with everybody they want immediately? Yeah, yeah. and the social yeah. element yeah. makes it such an amplifier just because yeah. it allows for that conversation to take place yeah. at such a hyper local and hyper um, yeah. immediate level. Well, the thing is that what you said is, is, is it not organic? Of course it is. But if you incite it, encourage mm. it, you can multiply it exponentially. Yeah. Now, I, yeah. I love that thought. Yeah. And you know what came up for me when you were sharing that also is that while that model that you suggested from the dentist should be adopted by everybody, unfortunately, it's the opposite. Yeah. It's adopted by the very few. And the challenge that we all have who maybe raise our hand or tout that flag of being a company, a small business, local company, if you find yourself in this story, then you're, you're nodding your head right now and you're thinking, hey, that's me. You know, my, my reward is really in the experience and of course I do, I deliver a great product and a great service. That's like a non-negotiable. The experience is the real reward. It's that invisible part that happens once you've already committed to somebody. The challenge is, is just in that. It's inherent in the dynamic is that a lot of times you have to take a leap of faith and you don't know whether or not they're representing that level of value until you're already doing business with them. And in some capacities, you might say it's already a little bit too late. And so that's something that I want to get into Coming up, my man, Joe. Thank you for setting that table for us very nicely. The number one mistake that everybody, and I'll even say myself included, we've all made this mistake, is making right now locally in the small business arena. You're not going to want to miss Joe's answer. Coming up, this is Real Talk Radio San Diego. You're in the stash, baby. We're going to leave you a little better than how we found you today. We'll be right back. 